Right, I'm with uh, Jason Wise, and we're at the Silkworth uh, Lodge mm. Charitable Unit, which has been receiving lots of publicity in the last few days. Not welcome publicity, because uh, the States, for some extraordinary reason, amongst other things, has terminated the service level agreement. Just tell us a bit of background. Yeah, I think like, what, what, what's actually happened is the, the service level agreement is in place, but what's happened is, is the, 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 the referrals that come through to us have stopped. Um, and they've stopped since October last year. And in January of this year, uh, we had a delay on our service level from being receiving us, and it took a lot of, a lot of um, uh, interference by to get a lot of politicians involved in order to, to make sure that this thing was, was going to move forward um, and we were going to get our funding. However, um, you know, we have got our funding. But we haven't got the referrals coming through for the drug and alcohol team who are effectively, or the health department, who are effectively paying for six beds in a, in a facility which is not being utilised. Have they effectively renewed the service level agreement? They've paid you funding, does that mean they've renewed it for this year? They've paid us funding for, this, for, yeah. for our quarterly funding, so we're receiving funding this year. For a quarterly funding? We, it's an annual payment, but we receive it quarterly. Right. Um, so when it comes to the end of this year, again, we don't know where, uh, where, where, where we will stand. The one thing I will say about service level agreement is that it's actually not really worth the paper it's written on. It's not morally uh, right. Legally, it's not worth anything. Um, a service level agreement only works if it's two-way, if it's two-sided with, with, with the other party, i.e. in this case, government, and there's a, a contract that runs alongside it. Now, for an organisation like ours, you know, a contract of, that runs alongside it should be running for at least three years, um, renewable after three years. Just to have a service level agreement on its own, one-sided, doesn't work. And going forward, that's going to be a big, a big thing. That the similar issues were raised by other charities that have also been talking to scrutiny, which is where this uh, disagreement was made known. The, the difficulty about running things on a year-to-year -year basis, you need staff, you need, uh, you need to plan for the future, and a year agreement is a bit of a nonsense anyway. No, complete nonsense. I mean, how can you run? You wouldn't expect it out, uh, out of the business, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, we are providing a service, and it's a service, services that are, are filling the gaps which should not be provided by government. So look after them, look after these, these services, look after these, these charitable organisations and, and work with them. Against it's them. been quite, quite obvious uh, with the discussion that's erupted from this, that what the service you provide with alcoholics and, and drug users is an essential, very essential service in Jersey. And remarkably, there is nothing similar in Guernsey that people are sent from Guernsey to and from other places. That's correct, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, we, nobody else does what we do here. Uh, in, we, we receive referrals from Guernsey, more referrals from the Guernsey uh, Department of Health than we do from Jersey uh, Department of Health. We receive uh, clients from the UK. Clients hear about us uh, as, uh, through, through um, whatever, they hear about us, and so we have clients from the UK, and we've had clients from Antigua. Um, so, you know, the, the, what we do here is, is, is first class. Is, you, you, you couldn't be questioned on, on this, the, the level of service. Which just brings this whole this whole thing to you know. Why what was also worrying for hearing from other things at scrutiny it is a bit of a trend going on that the the government here, health or the treasury, is reducing payments to charities who've got service level agreements. That you're not unique in that. No, I think um, I mean I can't really speak for other charities, but I think that whatever's going on, whatever agenda there is, um, you know, we're about to talk about we're about to go ahead with a white paper here which actually fundamentally is about transparency and communication with the sector, the first sector. Um, the evidence that I've seen so far, not just from my own experience through SOGRAF, but the experience from knowledge I've got of other organisations is that transparency and communication is, is, is certainly lacking. What's also remarkable about the white paper is it's about an expanded service to the public, care in the community. I mean, the scheme they're talking about is going to be an all singing, all dancing facility where people are going to get care at home, doctors are going to visit them, mm -hmm. facilities like yours will be available, it's, it's flagged up in there, this is the facility. But if you don't provide it, who will provide it? I don't know that who who could provide there's nobody else that could provide this facility in the Channel Islands. This thing doesn't take this does you can't set a treatment centre like this up overnight. You can't do it in a year. This has taken us fifteen, twenty years to get to this stage. 
where we are, a, you know, the professional organisation that we are, with the affiliations that we've got with leaders in the UK uh, in the field of drug and alcohol, um, the Booper recognition, you don't get Booper recognition overnight, it's, it's, it's hard work, investors and people, another big recognition that we have. These are all things that, that contribute to the success of, 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 of our organisation. The professionals who refer uh, clients to you, do they follow through? Do they come and see what you're doing? Do they keep tabs on what you're doing with their patients? When you say the professionals... You what, doctors, doc psychiatrists? Yeah, we, we have a great uh, relationship with the GP, the GP network and the uh, psychiatrists. Uh, we get referrals from GPs, uh, we get referrals from employers. Um, and they're, they're, that's quite important to keep them involved, obviously with the client's uh, uh, um, permission. And, and often the clients actually want that as well, so that they know, so they can keep... Uh, because this is the fundamental part of the white paper proposals for care in the community. This is exactly what will happen. There will be this great reference and discussion. Yeah. Various professions will talk one to another, but it seems like the, there is no talking going on between you and the... The health sector, for some strange reason. The, it, it is a strange reason, and and I know that those those claims were rejected by by members of uh, by a senior health official. But let me clarify that um, the communication that we have we have had with health for the last eight months has been on a question base. We've asked questions. We want answers to those questions. We haven't received those answers. Um, my communication with, with uh, um, the health authority most recently was we need these answers, what is going on? Um, in the paper it was also claimed that um, we, we have not uh, um, been involved with the white, we haven't, we haven't produced or put anything into the white paper. Well actually uh, my submission or my response to the white paper proposal was made to the scrutiny panel. Uh, my submission was full, frank and very clear. And um, so I, 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 re I reject that as well. What, what, what has been going on here is, is Silkworth has been, we've been asking the question, we've been sort of like, we'll deal with it, we'll deal with it, nothing's ever happened. For people I've spoken to, in order to come here, you've got to have uh, previously been detoxed. Now that's not a facility you offer. No. Not all clients require detox, depending on the amount of, of alcohol consumption or, or drug taking um, will dictate whether a detox is required. But if a detox is required, then we will, um, whatever is best for the client, whether it be that we be referred up to the drug and alcohol team who have uh, detox nurses um, or the, the, the client's own GP. And more than often than not, the clients go to the, the drug and alcohol service. The suggestion was made though that perhaps this unit might expand and have a detox unit. Yes, we, um, we were uh, influential in producing a detox uh, specification plan to open a detox only specific centre which would have been um, a separate building to Silkworth Lodge but would have been five residential beds for detox specific only uh, clients. Mm. Um, we invested, we, we got a lot of uh, supporters involved, the Lloyd's TSB Foundation was supporting us, um, we, had, we, we, look, we obtained a property, the State Street Bank was supporting us, uh, we had the funding in place, everything was ready, and then during the last two years, if you like, the interest, if you like, in what we were proposing started to disappear within the health department although it was seen as a, a, a vital... A vital uh, uh because ironically, the detox that generally takes place, most of it seems to take place at this at Saviour's Hospital, which the plan is, apparently, to uh, close down. Yeah. So what will, where will there be any well, detox facility? Well, that, that, that's a question. I, I, but there won't be... Um, there is more of a, de a push on home detox, which are carried out by drug and alcohol nurses uh, from... Uh, Center. Um, but from my experience, I've spoken to people and they say how, how dangerous that can be, that people can get totally disorientated. And it's extremely dangerous. I mean, unless an individual has got support at home to carry out a home detox, then, you know, it, it's really a, a pointless exercise for a lot of people. Um, and it's also an ineffective uh, use of, of, of money. Um, we had a, a, a facility which would have worked well with the health department to ca carry out um, residential detoxes and, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't taken up. So, and this was, a, and also I must highlight, this was something that was highlighted in the 2004 scrutiny panel that, uh, you know, to, to, to be looking at the detox and how we're going to do it, how the island's going to do it.
We tried to do that, and, and nothing, and we weren't taken up on our offer. You're the chief executive officer of this group, but your background is in something different. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, an ex, I'm, I'm from the finance industry. I spent nearly 20 years working in finance. Um, and, you know, having the opportunity to come here, um, you know, when you get to a stage of your career and you want to do something different, uh, I came here for an open day. I, I heard what clients had to say and what they'd been through and where they were now. And I thought I didn't care what the job was. I wanted to be part of this. So you view it. I mean, you're you're not unaware financially. That's the, the, the important point. So you can, when you're talking, hearing what the treasury, the way they behave in the health department, how they're pulling the funding from you and other charities. What's your response to that? My response is that it's a very, very dangerous, dangerous way to be be playing with the with a vital sector in this island. You cannot play around with finances for this sector. The sector rely on the finances that are being provided. Um, you start doing that, you're, you're putting that, that organisation in danger. And without these organisations, you know, the, the, you know, they can't be done. They can't be run by the states of Jersey, otherwise they would be. Well, the, the extraordinary thing is that the impetus is uh, supposedly to engage with what they're now calling the third sector, the charitable network. To, to use these resources and yet what they're actually doing to you and also ironically with Roseneath which they also did which was a vaguely similar organization with premises which you've been also much involved with it it, it seems not unexplainable like I'm I, the words fail me and, I'm, and at the scrutiny meeting it was noticeable people were visibly shocked at what had happened they couldn't understand why it was possible is there some something hidden in the cupboard is there some great bogey that we don't know about here? I'm sure there possibly is a big bogey in the cupboards I'm uh, I'd love to know what that is um, the, the, the the beauty about what we're what we've been through recently and what we've done is that we, is one we haven't actually done anything wrong we've highlighted something which is missing after months of trying to get to the bottom of it um, and quite rightly the, 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 the media and the support that, that we've re received in respect of this has highlighted a, a fundamental fundamental issue in communication and lack of what happens at the end of this year if the service level agreement, the money is not there, what happens then? You'll carry on? Well, I, we would love to carry on, but the, the, the funding that we receive from, from the state of Jersey is, is, is fundamental. You know, it, you know, we have to employ qualified professional people to carry out the service that we carry out. Um, and without funding, it would be difficult. I'm sure I, could, I, could, I, could, I would be able to secure funding outside, but why should we have to do that? Is that part of the squeeze, you think, they're trying to get you to find outside funding? Is that possible? It, it could possibly be a squeeze. I mean, I don't know why they would want to do that when, you know, it's, it, 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 you know, the, well, I say that when we've got six empty beds and we've had six empty beds for the period of time that we've had them empty. Maybe that is a squeeze. I do not know. And I hope that, I hope that from all of this, from all of this, this, this outcry and support that we've got from, from, from everybody outside, um, that questions are answered. And they're answered truthfully and frankly. Not many uh, states members have uh, appeared over the uh, the wall. The uh, the councilman of Grooville is trustee, so he's been very active. Yeah. Uh, any others appearing? To no, I mean, uh, uh, Constable Murphy is, is is our trustee. He's, he's he's extremely supportive, and he you know he's he's, he's great for us. He really helps us out. Um, but I am shocked. I'm surprised that that that. After everything that's happened over the last two days and what has been revealed that we haven't seen sight of our health minister, uh, she hasn't responded to what is what is actually what I deem to be a very, very serious issue and something that, that, that could impact on the white paper. So I would have thought that she would have been involved. I also said, said that I haven't seen anybody senior from, from, from the health department or the chief executive, chief executive. I don't know the reason is for that. All very strange. It's uh, a mystery. It is a mystery. Thanks for your time.